good morning welcome to episode 16 of Tim gets lost in Europe well we nearly did yesterday yeah it's day 16 of riding today I'm still in France we're heading towards Strasbourg and I just noticed this morning that I accidentally knocked a setting on the camera and it's been recording me in a very dark picture so if that affected yesterday's video which I haven't edited yet but if it did affect it my apologies but hopefully we've got a brighter picture today come on Mr Jaguar get out of the way overtakes and then stops Perhaps he just wanted to have a look at the trike. It's a busy road over the other side of the field there. I hope I don't have to go alongside it too long. The lorries are quite loud, even at that distance. So that was a nice campsite anyhow. The uh, lake water was surprisingly warm considering uh, how little sun we've actually had over the last week but very easy to get in and have a swim enjoyed that anyway with that as I'm on a road I probably shouldn't be using the camera I will uh, put the camera away and get back to you in a bit The village and town names around here are still very German. Ranzenheim. That's not very French, is it? Yeah, big German influence still. Lovely houses though, aren't they? So all I'm doing at the moment is spending the first 10-15 minutes of this morning getting back onto the Eurovella 15 I had to come off it slightly yesterday to get to the campsite. Which is the first time I've had to do that since I've been on the EV15, I think. It's time. There are some advantages to coming off of the EV15 sometimes. You get to see places like this.
I don't quite know where to point the camera, they're all so pretty. peaceful morning as well. It's set to be the second sunniest it's set to be the second sunny day on the trot. Not bad weather forecast for the weekend however. Not looking forward to that. Uh, but that's a long way off yet. The weather forecast might change before we get there. pronounce this one then. go back to the other one. This one doesn't seem as nice. <laughs> oh, proper sleepy little places though, aren't they? I don't even think anybody lives here. It's not that early in the morning, it's about half past eight. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'll bring you back later. Bye for now. After that lovely little detour, we're back on the EV15. And off the roads, which is always nice. So a rather peculiar experience in this supermarket behind me. I went in to get some pastries for my breakfast and a little something for lunch. Um, it's an obviously French supermarket, not because it's oldy, but because all the signage inside is French. It's all written in French. And outside there's French cars all parked in the car park with French license plates on them. But I went inside and everybody's speaking German. Definitely in France. But it seems as though the community here are so close to Germany that they sp decided to speak German. German speaking French people. Doesn't sound very likely, does it? Even the woman on the checkout. Oh well, just thought I'd let you know. I should be in the centre of Strasbourg in about the next 15-20 minutes, I think. And then I'm going to spend the afternoon on a very long, very straight canal. 
hopefully that's not on a road. I haven't checked it, but I'm hoping it's just a path along the side of the canal. Right, let's go and see Strasbourg. Well, I'm pretty much in the centre of Strasbourg now. And that quay is about the most impressive thing I've seen. Apart from being the home of one of the two EU parliaments, I'm not sure that Strasbourg is known for anything else. Hmm. If I see something, I'll show you. Meanwhile, I'm going to stop here and have my lunch. Good a place as any. So I've just turned left out of Strasbourg, heading south, and I'm on this canal. I don't know the name of the canal, I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. But the weather's warmed up quite considerably, I've changed into my shorts, got all creamed up with the sunscreen, and I've now got 18 miles of this path until I get to my campsite. Well, I hope we get away from this traffic. I don't know that we will, but it's a bit loud at the moment. I'll get back with you when it quietens down a bit. Well, that's a bit better. We're shaded from the hot sun under these lovely row of trees. The traffic's gone away. Yeah, it's a bit less crowded as well. Yeah, I don't mind if it stays like this till the end of the day. Right, let's go for a land speed record. <laughs> On the flat. headwind actually it's probably the wrong day to try and do it in my hand. Oh well. Didn't think about that one. I need my left hand to change the Fneo gear. 
Oh. Well, that's my excuse anyhow. Aha! So there are some boats on this canal. I had been wondering. Cool, they look nice. I wouldn't mind living aboard something that size. They're bigger than the ones in London for sure. Yeah, they're nice. There's always one in every group who isn't looking and pulls out right in front of you. You're like, ah! They're too busy enjoying the scenery, which I can't blame them for doing that. I'm sure glad somebody had the foresight to plant all these trees about 100 years ago. And finally, I turn off the canal. Oh, it's been a long day. Going down towards a little village. Go away, Laurie. Going down towards a little village called Rheinau. And there's a camping site somewhere down here on the right hand side. And that'll do me for today. So, where shall I put up my tent? Anywhere around here. Or here. Or there. Or any of this. <laughs> any of that. Apparently I can choose anywhere. Because they're low season again now. I think I'll go in the shade, just here. It's nice and flat. Right, I've just set up the tent in the spot that I showed you I was going to for today's two minutes in the tent. I'm going to show you in the tent. So this is a MSR Hubber Tour 2, two-man tent, but it's got this extended bit on the side which is or can be used as Trini's garage some of you will have seen this before after the 
Netherlands trip that I did in 2018. It's exactly the same tent. So I'll remove the fly door. And first things first, you've got that big storage space. I can fit Trini in there folded up quite easily. And still have some space in there if I need to. With all the bags and everything. I haven't needed to put her in there yet. The campsites are normally quite secure and she's always locked up. I shall be locking her up to that tree. So it'll be very difficult for anybody to take her away without me knowing about it. Uh, so inside, then we have the sleeping compartment over there. Try and give you as wide a shot as I possibly can. Obviously was a little bit damp when I packed it away this morning because there's some wet in here but we can soon air that out. And that is about six foot eight. Just over two meters, two meters ten, something like that from one side to the other. Width wise I think it's about one meter fifty. What's that? Three feet? Three and a half feet? Something like that. I don't know. But as I say it's made for two people. So uh, plenty of room for me in there with all my gear. And then there's another door that side that goes out. I shall open that in a moment to let some air blow through. Dry this out before I put any of my kit in there. But that's the tent, pretty much. There we go, MSR Hubber Tour 2. Suits me down to the ground, I love it. Packs away nice and small. So there we go, that's your two minutes for a day. Literally inside the tent and outside the tent. I'll see you tomorrow. Ta-da.